Hello again everyone, welcome back to my workshop. And in this video we're going to take a look at the new Mizon Evo speed controllers. Uh, this has taken the place of the Mizon Pro speed controller, so presumably it's an evolution of it. And so we'll take a look at uh, what's really evolved further on from the Mizon Pro controllers. What do you get? Uh, well, you get the controller. And on the back side of it, there's four little holes to which you can bolt these little mounting lugs, which helps secure to models if you have a tray. Uh, you get two little screws, which are for the uh, on-off switch that comes with a Jetty speed controller, and a packet of grommets, mounting lugs, screws, and the tiny little countersunk screws for these. Uh, and on the, the shell that comes around the box, on the inside of it, there's a template for you in case you want to get the mounting dimensions for mounting it to a tray in the model. And of course the instruction leaflet, which uh, I've discovered over the last couple of years of making these videos that most modelers simply ignore. Well worth reading though, you'd be surprised what you learn. Jetty speed controllers come with two leads. One with a black plug, one with a red plug. If you want to use it just as a standard speed controller with any brand of radio, including Jetty, the black plug plugs into your throttle channel and that's you done and off you go. Uh, for Jetty users, the red plug provides all your telemetry data from the Pro uh, or the Evo in this case, I should say. But it can also be the throttle lead as well as telemetry all in one if you set your receiver to output X bus and plug that in there to one of the expanders or X port or whatever, uh, which makes you know, this one a little bit redundant, you might think, but the Beck in a Jetty uh, Mison Pro or Evo puts its uh, power output onto both leads. So even if you're only using one of those leads for your purposes, uh, the power is there on the other one, which makes it useful to plug into a spare battery or unused servo socket on your receiver. Gives you two wires for the power to get to the receiver, two plugs, so there's a bit of redundancy there. And the Beck on these is good and powerful. Uh, 15 amps regular and 30 amp for one second burst. So you've got something that can really take care of a lot of good models there. And I will also be following this up with a second video showing you how to do um, motor reversing from the transmitter for uh, the Evo. And it will also work on the Pro because it has them in the same menu options. And motor reversing, uh, well, it's fairly obvious for ground vehicles or boats. But in the case of aircraft at the moment, it's currently fashionable on some of these timber type models, uh, the Draco and what have you. And so these controllers can run the motor in forward and reverse. And I'll be showing you in a second video how to set up your transmitter to usefully use that for an aircraft. So that's that out of the way. Let's uh, go in and have a look at all the software. Now let's look at uh, using the uh, transmitter software to set up your Mizon Evo. If you do not have a Jetty transmitter, uh, it may be some completely other brand you're using this with, or you might have a, um, the older Jetty module plugged into a different brand transmitter, don't worry. All of these menus are still available, and there's two other ways you can access uh, the settings. One is to use a Jetty box if you happen to have one. The other is to connect your Mizon Evo to the computer. And uh, for that you need two things. You need a free program called Jetty Studio which is available from Jetty's website. And you also need a little uh, USB connecting dongle. One of these. Yeah, You get them from Jetty. The uh, dongle you get from Powerbox will work as well uh, and I don't know for certain but I'm reasonably sure that the dongle from SM Model Bow would also work but don't take my word for it uh, and that then allows you to connect up any Jetty device to the PC 
when you do that, uh, unlike normal jetty sensors or receivers, um, it won't just work. You will need to power it up simply by plugging the main drive battery into the, the inputs on the meson and then studio will see it uh, from there you can do any software updates to the meson uh, if jetty has provided any and if you open a window device explorer window then you will get on computer exactly the menu system that you're about to see here on the transmitter and you can go through all the program and settings there if you need to I mentioned a moment ago that you get a, a little instruction manual with the meson. It's not the full instruction manual, it's purely a quick start guide. The full instruction manual uh, with vast amounts more information is available on Jetty's website and it is worth checking up on it. Um, uh, for example, in there, there is a, a description of each of the menu options, what they do, and there is also a table showing all the default settings that will be applied when you choose the vehicle type that we're about to see in the setup wizard. Okay, I've got my Meson Evo connected up. It's connected up to the 6S battery with Jetty's 5.5mm anti-spark connectors. It's plugged into a Jetty receiver into the EXT socket, which I've done deliberately rather than one of the E1 or E2 expander sockets, just to prove this can all be done. EXT. Uh, we're going to be using the Jetty X bus both as the throttle control and as the telemetry so I don't need to plug in the black lead uh, for throttle. I could use that just to provide power. Remember the Beck powers both the red and the black plugs. I could plug that into a, a spare socket on the receiver to give me redundant power cables. Something else to note here is that by using the EXT socket, I've still got sockets 1 to 6 free for servos. So I can use 1 to 6 for everything other than the throttle. I can use EXT for the throttle, and therefore I've actually got 7 outputs from this 6 output receiver. Uh, but then there's nothing else to plug telemetry into. Okay we shall have a look at the menus. Uh, so we're switched on there, plugged in. Let's go to Device Explorer and switch on the meson. Here we go. So I set it switched to on. It's found the receiver and there's the meson. So we come down into our meson. Incidentally, the number in brackets, it says three. That is the... Um, telemetry port or expander port if you like that the device is plugged into let's have a little look at the receiver you can see we've got uh, socket 5 or expander 1 socket 6 or expander 2 the X socket is there for socket 3 for telemetry you think we wonder what I'm on about let's plug it into socket 1 so it's expander 1 or servo 5. Now I'll press this button to refresh the screen and it'll change to meson evo brackets 1. There you are. If we change it to expander port 2, refresh. Yep. That is, of course, assuming you've changed expander ports 1 and 2 to be XBUS, not the default servo. So it should come back now as 2. There we are. And back here. Refresh it, it'll say 3. There we go. Uh, another little pointer, incidentally. In the REX receivers, but not the older, just R numbered receivers. The EXT port is auto sensing of the type of data it's getting. So, for example, an expander port, you have to choose like it's a telemetry sensor, which is the old EX, or you have to choose it as X bus, what have you. The EXT socket will recognize whether it's getting the older EX telemetry or the newer X bus 
and just automatically set itself to that. Well, at last, let's get into the meson. In we go. No, not the switch. That one. <clears throat> it's a problem of trying to watch the uh, the screen on my camera, which of course has a very slight lag on it. I tend to overshoot in the real world. Go to the quick setup. It says brackets plane. The meson comes defaulted to the plane type of vehicle. Go in here. Come down. What vehicle type is it? Because the meson Evo copes with all these different things. We've got, uh, let's see, we've got four different types of airplane, helicopter, car, and boat. And depending which one you select, a couple of things will happen. A lot of default settings will be applied. For instance, in the glider, we'll have a, a brake applied to the propeller, but the acroplane wouldn't. Um, the aircraft will have uh, unidirectional, in other words, forwards only, whereas things like car and boat uh, would have uh, forward and reverse. The helicopter would bring in the governor, etc. Um, and the second thing is that the subsequent uh, questions that come up will be uh, context driven by what you've chosen here. So uh, if you choose heli, it's going to start asking you questions about your governor and various things to do with that. But if you choose something else, it's not going to ask you governor questions, but it's going to ask you questions relevant to that kind of vehicle. So I shall choose, let's say, a glider. That's it done. Come on, next. And it will now put in various parameters, but it wants me to check on a few things. The start acceleration is... If the throttle is off, how long would it take to go up to full throttle if you slammed the throttle open? So 1.5 seconds. Uh, response is, once the motor is running, how fast do you want it to respond to the throttle? And if you throttle back down to zero or off, then it goes back to using the start acceleration to get it going. And once it's going, it uses the response setting. So we'll stick with that. Normal, you can choose fast or normal. We'll stick with normal for the moment. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, there's a full manual on Jetty's website, explains what all of these actually mean, gives you actual values for times, that kind of thing with it. Uh, timing of the motor, 15 degrees. Uh, it's probably going to be a 20 to 25 degree timing because it'll be an eight pole motor most likely. Uh, at the back of Jetty's instruction manual, there are uh, some good instructions on how to find out what sort of timing and um, pulls and things you've got in your motor if you can't get that data from the manufacturer. Some manufacturers like Hacker are great. There's information about the motor, every motor, on their website. Uh, others, like if in Britain, if you buy the Ripmax Quantum Motor, not only does it not come with any data, there is none on Ripmax's website. And I've tried emailing them to ask, and you get no response. I suspect they haven't got a clue. Um, rotation, uh, normal or reverse. This is not a sort of bi-directional on the throttle, like you can you know, go into reverse in flight or whatever. This uh, is just if the motor is turning the wrong way. The normal way of fixing that is to swap around any two of the three wires to the motor, make it run the other way, but you can do that in here if you want to. Move on. Okay, what brake do you want? It's automatically gone to selecting the hard brake. There are various brake options which are off altogether. The reason you want a brake general on the glider is the folding propeller. You can have soft, medium, hard brake. You can have a manual brake. You can have proportional brake. It's all in the instruction manual. And it tells you there um, what sort of power levels and rates at which it's going to apply the brake. All of these, by the way, can be totally changed by you once you go into the expert settings. Um, so don't worry about choosing something here and thinking, well, oh, maybe not what you wanted. The whole thing's totally changeable. It defaults to being lithium batteries. 
number of cells uh, auto it will try and calculate the number of cells based on the voltage when you plug it in which is fine if you plug in a freshly charged battery uh, but if it's uh, you've been using the battery a bit and you uh, during the day and then you go back to plug it in without recharging it there is a chance it might think it's a wrong number of cells so I'm going to force it to say it's a six cell uh, what cutoff voltage per cell would it use? 3.2, that would do fine, and therefore 6 by 3.2 would give you the 19.2 volt cutoff. Now, what cutoff method do you want it to use? It can be to slow down the motor, a hard stop of the motor, slow it down, um, slow down over 30 seconds, or step down. Um, the slow down happens over 30 seconds. The timed 30 seconds, I think, means that it will slow down over 30 seconds, but should the reason for its slowdown go away, i.e. the voltage recovers, the, the internal temperature drops out um, uh, back into limits, that kind of thing, then it will give you control back again, uh, whereas slowdown implies it will just slow down to zero over those 30 seconds. Again, it's all explained in the instruction manual. And finally, 6 out of 6, the Beck voltage. You've got anywhere from 5 volts in 0.1 volt increments up to 8.4. Um, there you go. And as it says, Beck voltage is applied after final confirmation. So even if you choose 8.4 by accident now, it's not going to suddenly jump up to that and fry your 5 volt servos because you will have to go through and just confirm it. Do you want to apply the quick setup? Say yes. And that's it done. You've basically got all the sensible settings for a glider. Um, if you go into the expert menu now, rather than asking you questions, you can go through all of these steps and all the massive amounts of settings. Uh, now, something that I must point out is that uh, if you are running the Mison, and this applies to a Mison Pro as well, as the Mison Evo, if you are controlling it through X bus, as I am here, so I'm not plugging in a separate throttle, then it will not get failsafe from the receiver. And the reason is that Jetty receivers pass on X bus exactly as it came from the transmitter. So the, any failsafe that the receiver applies to its servos is not applied to the X bus stream. Any remapping of the servo outputs is not applied to the X bus stream. The only modification a Jetty receiver will make to that X bus stream is if you have an assist and it can apply the gyro corrections to it. Therefore, uh, if for some reason your receiver goes into failsafe, it won't failsafe the X bus data going down to the meson. How, therefore, does the meson stop the propeller going when it's in failsafe? Well, it's not getting any data, and therefore it knows something has gone wrong. It could be the receiver's gone into failsafe, or it could be that the, simply the wire has become disconnected. And here is what it will do. It will wait for a delay of 0.3 of a second, and then it will do what it says in fail-safe mode, which is motor off, and I suggest that is most likely the one you want. You certainly don't want the motor to hold with an aeroplane. The thought of that huge propeller just carrying on going, or fail-safe, and you can fail-safe to a specific value, but I think um, certainly for any aircraft, I don't know about other vehicles, but aircraft with a propeller, you want that motor to go off. Um, and then there's the stop motor beep mode, which is explained in the instruction manual. Okay, uh, input control, go in there, and X bus control, I'm going to tell it now, this is where I want it to be controlled by X bus, not by just one of the normal channels. On auto or on manual? Auto means that if we come down here, you press edit, operate the throttle channel, it should see it, pick it up, and 
and find it and be quite happy with it. I'll go for on manual. I'll come down here, press that throttle, choose your throttle channel. It's that one. And that's it. OK. Now we can go back. And my throttle will now respond from the X bus. You can come out of that menu onto the motor. And here you can tell it things about the motor. Normal rotation, frequencies, start power, the timing, number of poles, gears, filtering, etc. Number of poles, uh, don't worry about getting too hung up on this. Uh, in one sense, it's not needed in most cases. What it does is give you the correct count of the RPM of the motor. Um, and if you're not worried about the RPM of the motor, then the number of poles doesn't matter. It doesn't affect how the controller controls the motor. One place that it is vital to get the correct number of poles is with a helicopter because it needs to know the RPM for the governor to work properly. Um, but again, you know, hopefully your manufacturer can tell you a number of poles. At the back of the instruction manual, Jetty tells you how to work out the correct value for the number of poles if you don't have that information from the manufacturer and you want to know the RPM. Interesting thing here is that <clears throat> It's put in a timing of 15 degrees uh, and uh, 10 poles. But in the Jetty instruction manual, it says that the, the normal timing for any motor of eight poles or more is 20 to 25 degrees. <clears throat> so why has Jetty given it timing of 15 with 10 poles when their own instruction manual says that would most likely be 20 to 25? I don't know. Um, I'll leave it there. Um, strange, isn't it? You'd think they would have followed their own manual. Then you can set up the brake, and there's all sorts of options there. Limits and protections. Here we go. This is one we've already set up during the wizard. Governor for your helicopter. F3A mode. There is a little bit of extra software in here for those flying F3A planes. I won't pretend to understand it. Um, it's to do with uh, the you know, it more active braking, this kind of thing. It's disabled because we did not choose F3A as the type of plane in the wizard. And the back, we've seen you can apply different voltages. So that's a quick quiz through there. And then the last two items of the telemetry are pretty much the standard jetty stuff. It tells you there the uh, current values and whether you're getting your telemetry. And there's a couple of items I really like. And that is the temperature, which is the temperature of the speed controller, and separately the temperature of the beck. And the instruction manual says... Um, that these could go badly wrong if they go over 100 degrees. And therefore I set alarms using the standard um, Jetty alarm software if they reach something like 70 or 80 degrees, because uh, I want to know well before they hit their limits that something could be about to go wrong. Very interestingly, in one of my models, which has a air scoop underneath the model, which points up inside the fuselage and my Mison Pro is sitting at the top of that vent. Um, when you open the throttle, you expect the um, internal temperature of the speed controller to rise because you're pumping a lot of current through it, but it immediately drops because it's sitting above this uh, air scoop vent. So it just shows the value of cooling. And if we drop out of here back to the telemetry min max, uh, as with many jetty items, you can set a, a switch if you want to clear out the min-max. Um, you can clear it out now just by pressing the button. Uh, clear it auto, uh, which uh, for the capacity, that's fine by me. In other, it tells you in the manual at what point uh, when you've rebooted everything, uh, will it reset the capacity count back to zero. Um, and it's after a few seconds of throttle open or something like that. Uh, and then it shows you max stuff here. Okay, if you don't want it to clear the capacity count back to zero, 
you come in here and follow the instruction manual. Uh, you can set it to manual and um, reset it manually. But I always plug in a fresh battery, so I want the capacity count back to zero each time I use it. Okay, and that's a brief whiz through uh, using your Mison Evo. I'm off now to mount this into my Curare, which at the moment has a, an 80 amp speed controller and uh, a separate beck to power the whole thing. So you've got electric retracts there, um, which um, a Jetty Mison will have no problem running that with a 15 amp sustained output. That'll be very happy. And my Curare also has an MUI in it for the electric telemetry. So it'll be nice to get rid of three items and replace it with just the one. Uh, I will be back with the Curare, with the Mison Evon in it, uh, in another video where we shall look at how to program your jetty transmitter to make use of the bi-directional uh, control, i.e. forward and reverse, on the throttle stick to cope with those uh, models which are currently popular, uh, like Dracos and some of the Timbers, where you can use uh, reverse thrust by reversing the motor. Although, of course, you using a, an Evo or a Pro Mison, you can do that with any model. It doesn't need to be the timber type. Okay, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick run through and that that was useful for you.